I want to be clear, this, this, is a, this is a team approach. We have a phenomenal team here, and I, I feel extremely lucky to be the superintendent director. If the kid or the student has the drive and yeah. the will, want, and desire yeah. to, to uh, accomplish anything, and not only automotive, but any trade, you know, they can, you know, and, and Diamond provides that in, in a way that, that is very unique. We have a, a tremendous family here, uh, alumni, the Bengal Foundation, who really are uh, instrumental in, in providing uh, our kids with what is hopefully a very unique and outstanding education. The past two years, we've turned away a high number of students that wanted our shop. Realistically, we, uh, we received over 800 applications for 375 spots, so um, that, is, that is a problem that a renovation uh, just can't fix. We're not working on, you know, projects this big. We're working with cars. Yep. You know, 15 feet long, 12 feet long, 20 feet long. Um, we're doing some work for the community, uh, work for the school here as well. You know, we painted railings and uh, miscellaneous fences and other pieces for the community that aren't necessarily cars but they're large items yeah. you know so nothing that we're working on is small oh, right, right. you know and, and when we do work with one panel we've got 10 students working with one panel the infrastructure that supports that kind of learning is, is being stretched to a point and it's one of the challenges we face because you know when people come here uh, they'll say oh the building looks great um, you know I, I liken it to a, a, a car that's in deep trouble with an outstanding paint job on the outside, it looks really good, but you know, in terms of the actual workings, uh, there are many shortcomings and problems that uh, I, I think of renovation are going to be very difficult in fixing. We've even had the discussion with our administrators about the potential for when we do have our new facility, about the potential for a clinic um, that would be uh, where our students would work, and it would be a combination of the health assisting students, the dental assisting students, and the new medical assisting. Um, program that, that they're looking to start, which is currently in the process of getting uh, going through the approval process, we're looking to perhaps pioneer that, um, where yeah, our yeah. students would be able to um, get the care that they need um, and still have the learning. One of the challenges with these clinical rotations is we don't have one place where we can bring everyone. We, dental offices are small. So we can drop maybe one student off at that office, one at a different one. It takes us an hour to deliver all the students to the various dental offices, yeah. and then someone has to check on the students. Um, so if we had a dental school in, in town or nearby, we could go to that one spot and keep an eye on everyone. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be pretty exciting. I see 10 from 15 years from now, we, we had better have our own bank on campus, which we will be running uh, with, with a partnership, hopefully with someone here local, like, like yeah. a Bank 5 yeah. or, or a forward municipal credit union. We should be running our own bank. We sh our students should be out there. We should be having, um, I don't want to say think tanks, but we should have, be opening up micro companies. I mean, yeah. the goal is to incorporate marketing art for sales and stuff with the store, with, with the shop. You have to do the personalized items and stuff like sweatshirts or, um, you know, because all, all schools sell sweatshirts and t-shirts for their school. Uh, we actually have the capability here to embroider it or, or to, to personalize it with your name or whatever you want. We're just such a high need of a new school and, and better resources. We do our best and the kids are great and the kids learn and they go out and they become successful, but it's, it's so frustrating to know how much better it could be. So many different challenges, and our staff is excited about you know doing the legwork necessary to meet those challenges, but are restricted by the limitations of this building, and there are many. We're in the middle of a partnership right now with Newark um, Naval Underwater uh, System Center out in uh, Middletown. They um, they brought us some um, some parts and a 3D scanner because they're looking to do some research. They would be able like to be able to scan a part when they're on a submarine and say a part is broken, scan a part, um, put it into the software and then print it, 3D print it in metal. But to be able to situate ourselves so that our, my students can work with the students in the other, uh, in the other shops would be fan fantastic. Technology has changed and with that, but you still need your, your, your graphics people, your design people. You know, your plumbers, your electricians and stuff, and that's what the school is, is providing. They're providing all those services that, that we need to, to survive. You know, your, your culinary arts, um, 
all of them. I mean, we all fit together to, to make the world work. Yeah. Uh, one thing that we do have here at Diamond is the house building program, uh, which has been great. Uh, students get out there from the carpenters to the electricians to um, some of the facility management uh, for masonry and for landscaping duties, um, for painting, for sheetrock and for insulating, um, of course plumbing and heating, yeah. HVAC apartment out there. So it's great to see the kids collaborating and working together in the field, getting that real life experience. I'm extremely proud of, of the inclusiveness of, of our teaching faculty and the fact that we have a lot of non-traditional students who are doing very nicely in, in, in areas of construction, welding, machine tool, you know, advanced manufacturing. And, and so, you know, again, it, the idea and it's what makes Exploratory so great is that the students who come in are able to explore 12 programs. You know, everybody had this concept or this notion that, and it did happen in the 80s, that a lot of manufacturing went overseas. but. Advanced manufacturing, the high-tech manufacturing, and you know you're still going to get a lot of stuff from China and Japan and yeah. India, but the real advanced, you know, like knee replacements, a lot of medical stuff, um, Department of Defense, that's all manufactured here. And what's happening is there's such a gap because people didn't get involved in the machine tool trade because they said, oh, there's no future in it. Well, now it's through the roof. There's this idea out there that if you are at Diamond, you either have to say you support you know, the students going into the workforce exclusively or to go into college exclusively. It's not the way, you know, the market works today. Uh, we have students who, who do both. Um, I'm proud of the fact that our incredibly successful cooperative education program has allowed students to make money to be able to go to college and interestingly enough, um, there's such great employees that the employers sometimes keep them on part time while they're going to college. And uh, I can't believe the amount of projects we've done for the communities. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we've saved the communities yeah. loads of money. Um, and uh, you know, it was always great projects. Uh, yeah. We also did the Chamber of Commerce. And it's great to have those students to be able to go out in the surrounding towns in the city of Fall River to perform that live work. Like I said, whether it's old school buildings that we're going in rehabbing, whether it's firehouses that they're working on the heating systems, um, it's just all around great experience for them. You need infrastructure and the contractors need experienced uh, tradesmen to, uh, to execute their work. Uh, some of our largest, largest electrical contractors in the area are all Diamond graduates. We have some students who are working at, uh, at um, fabrication labs, 3D printing labs, where their job is to uh, load, the, load the printers, unload the printers, clean the printers. Um, that's a lot to do with, I mean, not only just putting the, the, the file in there, and printing it, there's a little more to it. There's cleaning them out, maintaining them, loading new material, uh, post-processing operations where the student takes the part out of the printer and maybe has to do some cleaning up and some sanding and finishing up the part where it's actually presentable as a working part. They go out into the community, they do this work, and it's a value added for a lot of these communities. They don't have to pay to have yeah. this work done. The fact that our students have options, I think, is an incredible opportunity especially in a labor market where 30% of all of the jobs that are going to exist in the next 20 years are, don't exist right now. So in terms of trying to prepare for that type of a future, the, the most important thing we can teach here is for students to get a well-rounded education, be extremely employable, but also be persistent and have malleability so that you know, as markets shift, they can, they can make the shift as well and continue to support their families and community. We have to update our programs with yeah. those trades so yeah. our students are able to basically hopefully walk right into these jobs that they're getting and be able yeah. to fit right in like a glove and be able to use the same equipment that they're using um, going up to a machine and knowing what it's called and not being surprised like yeah. I don't know what that is. Yeah. Our program we want to have that, that equipment and training for our students so when they get these jobs and they're getting the jobs and they're keeping their jobs we want them to succeed at that. It's a tough trade. We usually make it around my age, 57, 58, and we start looking at retirement. Yeah. Not a lot of young people are willing, except for the students we have here, that yeah. really Most step up to the plate, to come into a dirty trade, tough trade, yeah. which pays huge money yeah. to keep it going. And that's where a well of shortage has come from. Mm -hmm. So valuable to us here is this program. And we've had people visit this program and, and can't believe the caliber of it. Yeah. And we're so proud of that. We try to get our students to have the skills and the high quality they need 
so they can be employable and be a value yep. to their employees. And they have been. They've been holding their jobs. They've been there for years. Some of our graduates have been with their co-op employees now for 15 years after graduation. Wow. We do a remarkable job of, of producing food for, for the communities. But the reality is, is uh, as we look at an ever-increasing population on the world front, we realize that proteins, uh, either through the ocean or, or through um, you know, husbandry, is, is going to become limited. We, we can't feed the 9 billion people who are going to be here um, in, in, in 20 years. We started this program going back about six, seven years now. Um, we started doing peanut butter powder before it even went on the shelves. Okay. Um, we started working with a little bit of uh, molecular gastronomy, which is the study of food properties while they cook and through the process as they cook. Within the next five years, you're going to see somewhere between one in five and one in seven vehicles have autonomous features. Um, there's a lot of uh, high-tech information that's going to have to be relayed to the technicians who work on these cars. The augmented uh, reality, um, artificial intelligence, and this is going throughout all of the programs. And one of the things that we're trying to do as an administration and a teaching staff is we're trying to predict this stuff by looking at markets. Some of the, uh, the newer technologies we need to keep up with and we end up running, you know, running out of space. This, this room itself was designed for an electronics program of the 60s and things have drastically changed in the last 50 years. We see this this transformation happening and we need to get our program, again, which was built in 1968, prepared not only with the equipment but with the physical space in order to do that type of learning. It's a different type of learning. And therein lies the challenge for the, the community at Diamond Regional. It is to understand that we are functioning in a building. We've always been punching above our weight, but we are functioning in a building that is clearly antiquated and we are if we don't do something about that we will be functionally obsolescent if not in 10 years within the next 20 years and and when people say well that's a long time from now um no it's really not in terms of the history this room i have room for 10 freshmen and 10 sophomores next year so sophomores and freshmen will be in this room next year okay. the next year we have to expand and we have to take over either another classroom uh, well basically we do have to take over another classroom uh, to make room for the juniors and then the seniors, which I'm hoping we'll be able to fit together and we'll have to hire another instructor as well. But beyond that, I mean, we don't have room here to expand the program beyond the 10 students that I can take each cycle, unfortunately. The reality is that this isn't just for the Diamond community, but it's for the community in whole. The return on investment is going to be phenomenal. I mean, the business owners that graduate from Diamond Regional that are still in this area are amazing. You know, I, we, we, we have a running joke that you know, you, you can't throw a snowball at a truck without hitting a diamond uh, business because it's, it's, they're everywhere. Yeah, I mean, we're fortunate. I mean, our students want to be here. They want to get in the trades. They, they're, you know, concerned about their careers. They're, they're concerned about their academic grades. I mean, you want to go on co-op, you have to hold a certain grade level in your academics yep. to stay out there in the field. So, I mean, they are definitely held accountable and they're very responsible. I mean, they're young teenagers and I mean, we're impressed every year. This push towards a new school is not just about Diamond Regional, but it's about, you know, the four sending communities and improving the communities, not just secondary students, but the, you know, adult learners who are disaffected. We just had a layoff of 160 workers over at Phillips. The reality is if those, if we can train people to have skills that cannot be outsourced, um, this, this type of thing will not happen, but it will take a commitment on the part of the community and the foresight to understand that uh, a, a short investment now um, is going to pay great dividends later because this building is going to exist one way or another and to fix this building is going to be incredibly costly. So when you take a look at a reimbursement rate of 72.43%, you know, um, it's, it's pennies on a dollar and, and uh, you know, I'm never, I'm never cavalier about taxpayer money because I am a taxpayer and uh, uh, that's why we're very serious about you know, trying to save wherever we can. But we're, we're looking at infrastructural issues that are going to be in the tens of millions of dollars if we're going to continue to function. How many more students we can reach? How, how much more we could improve the trades? It's, it's, it's earth shattering. I just, I, that's all I could say. I always like to thank all of our stakeholders and I could go through the list and I'm always afraid to go through the list uh, because you always forget somebody. Yeah. But, you know, this is a blanket thank you to the community for, first of all, the support that they provide for us. 
um, but also, you know, a, a clarion call that if we're going to exist as a premier technical school, we need to put ourselves in a position to be able to, you know, support that type of learning. And that's going to require the community to come forward and give us the support that they need.